originally I was not even going to be attempting to do the booktube -thon because it came at the worst possible timing for me this summer, honestly. But I saw people starting to post their videos and I got sucked right in. I know for sure I'm not going to be posting a video wrap-up or anything like that. I'll post updates on Instagram and also a booktube -thon wrap-up on Instagram because at around the last few days of this is when I will be going to Bush Gardens, moving, and starting orientation for grad school. And I will also be probably inundating Instagram with photos of my apartment and photos of the progress of moving in and asking you guys questions for where I should put things or paint things, I'm sure. So check that out if you're interested. So number one is read a book with blue on the cover. And for this, it's one I'm already almost done reading. And it's one I'm honestly really not enjoying. And I should have listened to you guys because a lot of you said, Katie, I don't think you're going to like this one. And you're right, because I'm not. But when I was 13, 14, I loved Holly Black's books, so I thought I'd go and check out one of her newer ones and see if it kind of inspired that same feeling I had when I was little. And it does not, and that is Into the Darkest, Into, no, Darkest Part of the Forest, and yeah, just not really liking this one. It has the little blue butterfly, so we're going to go ahead and count this, but... I don't know, it's not the worst book I've ever read, but it's just incredibly mediocre in my opinion, but I'll just go ahead and finish it. So number two is read a book. Read a book by an author who shares the same first letter of your last name. Now, I don't have one on hand that's the same first letter as my last name. So instead, I'm going to go with my first name, Katie, and I'm going to try to read Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. Now, this is also going to count for number three, which is read someone else's favorite book. And not to get depressing, but um, this was the favorite book of a former boyfriend of mine who passed away, and he had just wonderful taste in books. One of the most intelligent people I've ever known. I remember he was the type of person, because this happened back in college, and I would, it would be Friday night, and I'd be at a bar messaging him, you know, come out. And he'd be like, well, I would, but I'm finishing Heart of Darkness right now. <laughs> Um, that's just the kind of person that he was. And I know that this was one of his favorite books, and I really want to go through, because I think still on his Facebook, I'm, I, I don't know if this is too personal for you two, but I know on his Facebook, because it's still up, I think he still had his list of favorite quotes from books. So I'm thinking about trying to go through and read all of them eventually, just over time. But so really looking forward to this one. And it's also the one out of Kurt Vonnegut I've been most interested in checking out. So number four is read the last book that you acquired. And I was sent this one. And that is What Lies Within by James Morris. Now I have to admit, whenever I'm sent a book by the author themselves, I always get incredibly nervous and anxious that I won't like it because I know that they're actually going to watch the review. I think it's different when a publishing company sends you a book because you guys know I'm honest, whether it's horrible or wonderful, I'm going to say what I think. I don't understand people who say they only post positive reviews, but that's a topic for a different video. But I think this will be a good push for me to go ahead and read this because it does sound like something that I would like to check out. And number five is read a book without letting go of it. Now I'm probably going to treat this more so as read a book in one sitting or something like that. Realistically, I'm going to let go of this. But my dad is a massive Conan the Barbarian. I'm sure, well, actually, I'm sure a lot of you probably aren't familiar with those. Maybe you're too young, but it's a very famous comic book series. Um, I remember Frank Frazetta, I think, is the artist, and I've been, met his wife when, like, my dad and my brother loves reading them as well. We went to this little museum with a lot of the paintings he's done, but Red Sonia is a character from the Conan the Barbarian world. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, because I could be, but I've never read Conan the Barbarian. Quite homoerotic when you look through them, um, but I was kind of interested in this. And I haven't read a lot of graphic novels, so I thought this one might be fun and sexy. Number six is read a book you really want to read. And this is one where whenever I say, you know, recommend me a horror novel, so many people comment. And a lot of people actually always say, I, no, I think you've already read this. But if you haven't, they say something along those lines, which shows me you guys think that I would really like it. And that is Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Now, I have read Horns, which I didn't love, but I did really really, really like. If you guys don't know, this is Stephen King's son, and this is a horror novel surrounding... I could be wrong, but this is gonna sound... this is gonna sound terrible if I'm wrong, but it's, I think, about a pedophile old man who lives in this world called Christmas Land, where he tries to take children into. But I've had so many people tell me that I will love this. It sounds strange to describe it and then say they think I would like it, but it's supposed to be horrifying. This is the one I'm probably least likely to finish because it is almost 700 pages, so it's not a quick read. Please let me know if there are good audiobook versions of either Nosferatu or Cat's Cradle. The others I probably wouldn't be able to do on audiobook, but I have 
probably 15 odd hours in total I'm going to be in the car this week, so hopefully I can get a big chunk of either of these books. Number seven is read seven books, but that's just not going to happen, and I'm not going to just read a bunch of, you know, anime or comic books to try and get to that number. I'd rather just focus on these. Does anybody else really start sweating a lot when they're filming? I don't know what it is. It's not nerves about filming. I think it's nerves about messing up because then I'll have to go back and edit more and I hate editing. Anyway, good luck to everybody doing the Booktubeathon. As I said, make sure to check out my Instagram because that's where I will doing book updates and also apartment updates and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!